Hello and welcome to a video on problem solving with a normal distribution. In this video we're going to look at applied problems which basically is like word problems involving the normal distribution. Alright now how are we going to do this? Finding the percentage of data items between two given data items. The way that we're going to do this, this is for normal distribution. That's important that you understand this part. This is specifically for normal distribution. Is first of all we're going to find the z-score, right? Data item minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And then we're going to use what's called the z-table. And we're going to find the percentage cor that correspond from the z-score. And that percentage is the percent that's below that value all right, that, that shows up in that table. So when we're going between two items, we have to use one minus the, you know, the one who's further to the right minus the other. But if we're going just to the right of uh, to the left of one item, we only need to use just one. So let me just give you a visual. So what this is the bell curve, okay? And then it's going to give us z scores. So remember, right here in the middle is a zero. And so let's say that we do it and we get like um, two you know, as our z-score. What the table is going to give us is it's going to give us all this area, this percentage uh, from the bell curve is actually given by area in these tables. So it's going to give us all this percentage. And because it's like a probability, and we've done the probability section, if we ever wanted to find the area on the other side of that z-score if we wanted to find this remember with with probability everything to the left is one thing everything to the right would then be the complement of that so we would use one minus whatever this area is that the the table gives me so this area is always the table is always going to give you area below so if I want area above, I would use one minus the area below. And then what this is telling us on this slide in the green is if you're wanting to find the area between two numbers, uh, between two z-scores, then what you have to do is find the area to the right of the lower one, sorry, the area to the left, sorry, the area to the left of the lower one, and subtract that from the area to the left of the upper one. So I'm going to put U for upper z-score and then over here maybe the L for the lower z-score. Okay, I want to find the area between the two. Well what the table is going to give us, the table always gives you area below. So that it's going to give me, for the upper one, it's going to give me all this area. All right, but the table will also give me the area below the lower one. All right, so what this is saying is find both of these numbers in the table. That'll give you the areas for both of these. It'll give you the area in the red region. It'll give you the area in the blue region. And then if you want the area between the two, you'll just subtract off the area over here in, oops, that didn't work out like I wanted. You just subtract off the area that's over here in this region. All right, that'll all be gone. And then what are you left with? You're only left with this region right here, which is exactly what you're after. You're after the area between them. So you take the area to the left of the upper. You subtract off the area to the left of the lower, and that leaves you the area that's between the two. Okay, now that's what this is telling you. So let's first of all just practice it with just a single value, right? With the less than. This is how the table reads. The table is always just giving you less than uh, percentages or, or probabilities. So according uh, according to this de Department of Health and Education, cholesterol levels are normally distributed. So that means we can use the table. And then the mean is 178.1. Standard deviation is 40.7. So what percentage have a cholesterol level that's less than this number, 239.15? So the first thing we do is find the mean. All right, or sorry, find the z-score. So there's the z-score. So one and a half. When you put this in your calculator, if you're going to try to do it all at once, just make sure to put 
a parenthesis around the numerator or do it in steps like this. All right. And then once you've done that, you're going to find the 1.5 in the Z table. So the Z score, there's the percentile. I'll show you this table from your book. So in your ebook, section 12.5, and then the multimedia e text. All right, and here's section 12.5 in the book, and then here is table 12.17. All right, tw table 12.17, if you notice, it's given us Z scores and then the percent that falls to the left of those z-scores, right? The percentile that's corresponding to that z-score. So we just had a z-score of 1.5, right? So there's 1.5, and the percentile that falls to the left of that's 93.32. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that 93.32% of uh, Men in that age cholesterol is less than 239.15. The original value that we had was 239.15, and we took that 239.15 and um, converted it to a z-score. The z-score is one and a half, and then we just found the one and a half. This is the percent that's less than. Okay, it's always the percent on the table. It's always the percent less than. All right, so you got to be aware of that. All right, what if it said what percent have a cholesterol level more than that? Well, more than is, is the complement of less than, so we would just take the 100%, subtract 93.32, and we would be left with 6.68. That's the percent more than, that's the percent less than. So just know that we can subtract these things from 100%, and that gives us the area in the upper tail. So again, like a visual, what we just found is... You know, with cholesterol levels, it tells us on this last page that the mean was 178. So down here, because it told us it was normally distributed, all of this below the 239.15, all this that I've got shaded kind of in the blue region right here, is 93.32%. And that means that this other part up here that I could put in red, this upper tail up here, that is the complement. That's the 6.68% that's up here in this tail. All right, now let's look at an example where we have to find a percent between two numbers. So the amount of time a self-employed American works in a week has a mean of 44.6 hours, a standard deviation of 14.4 hours. What percent of the self-employed individuals work between 37 Point four and eight, uh, eighty point six. So what do we need to do? We need to find those two z scores. Thirty seven point four. Plug it into the z score formula. Subtract the mean. Divide by the standard deviation. Notice it's always the uh, a, a number minus the mean. Okay. Don't ever do mean minus the number. Don't make it positive. We we want to see if it's below the mean or above the mean. So remember, a negative z score means it's below the mean. Positive z-score means it's above the mean. So there's my two z-scores, 2.5 and, and 0.5. I'm going to go to the table that I saw before and find those two numbers. So here's that table again. Again, that was on page 816 in your book. And 816 in your ebook also, you, everybody has access to it. So 2.5 is one of my z-scores. So I'm going to find one z-square is 2.5. Okay, so that corresponds to 99.38. I would make a note of that, 99.38. All right, and the other z-score is negative 0.5. That's negative 0.50. So once again, I'm going to make a note of that, negative 0.50 right here. So 30.85. And then what do I do with those two? I subtract 99.38 minus 30.85. That's 68.53% falls between those two uh, hours per week. So that means there's a 68.53 chance that if we pick somebody who's self-employed in the U.S., there's a 68.53% that they would work between those two many those two numbers per week. All right? Very good, you know, uh, chance of that happening. So that's what we do. We we find those numbers from the z-scores. So we found the 30, 
uh, 0.85, we found the 99.38 from the tables, and then we subtracted those two numbers. Okay, so there was the the 80.6 that had a z-score of 2.5. There was the 37.4 that had a z-score of 0.05. So the area between those two uh, values, the area between we found from the table. All right. So 99.38 minus 30.85, 60.53 60 roughly, is the percent that works between those two no, uh, two sets of hours per week. All right. Now again, once again, how summary? How do we get these percentiles? How do we get the percentages? How do we do these problems? Well, if what you're trying to find is a less than uh, percentage, you know what percent of the data is less than some number. If z if if your z score is this value b and you're finding the percent that's less than that you just use the table you find the z score in your table slap a percent sign on it okay that's what the table is for it's for less thans what percent is less than some number so that's exactly what this picture shows the shaded region is less than b so that's what we're doing there all right what if i'm wanting to find the percent to the right well, that means I would find the table in the area uh, on the actual table. I would find the area or the percentage to the left. I would find that region in the red. And like we said before, if I want above, if I want a more than, a percent higher than, then I need to find the number that corresponds to A in the table and then subtract that from 100. And then I'll get the right percent. So the table gives stuff like this. So if I want to find the upper percentage, I need to subtract from 100. All right, and then the one we just did. What if I have between two, and I find the area to the left of 1, and I subtract all the area that's to the left of the lower. And when I subtract that area off, all I'm left with is the area between the two. All right, so that's the process for finding these percentiles. With um, with your uh, with the table with the table that's given to you in your book. What I'm going to give you next in the next video is a way to use Excel to come up with these percentages.